Um, okay, I'm back with part two. So I wanted to show us some examples of um, these scriptures in action, the scriptures in the last section in action. How is it that um, the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of God, gives us, equips us with what we need for life and godliness? So I think a great example of this is um, David and Goliath. So that's probably a story that everybody kind of knows at least or has heard of. But let's just read through it because it's awesome. So this is 1 Samuel 17, um, and we can start in verse 4. So it says, A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves, and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. That's about 15 pounds. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, This day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistine's words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time he was old and well advanced in years. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. There was Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. So David's not even at the battle. His older brothers are at the battle. He's at home with his father and he's tending the sheep. Early in the morning, David left the flock with a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. When the, when the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. This is like an interesting thing that I may have time to touch on later. David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David? Can I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter, and the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been a fighting man from his youth. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's like, <laughs> even when he was a kid, he was a man. <laughs> He's been a fighting man always. But David said to Saul, you know those kids in class who are like, I don't know why you're 25 and everyone else is 9, but okay. So that was Goliath. Um... But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. This is really funny. So it's basically he's like dressing up kind of in like his dad's armor. 
I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. I think he's talking about David as a stick here. It could be his slingshot, but I think he's talking about that David is a stick. <laughs> like, not worthy to stand up against him. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it, it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So this echoes what Hannah said, right? That she's like, it's not about strength, it's just the fact that it's God's world. <laughs> you know. So if I'm God's man, if I'm God's woman, then God's with me. Um, whether or not you're big and huge and scary, you know, whether or not there's a bunch of people against you, whether or not it looks like the odds are couldn't possibly be in your favor, God is God and the battle is the Lord's. Um, as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. So this is awesome. So this is just like, um, it's really invigorating as a story because, you know, it's the classic sort of underdog story. Um, but also it's just like David's faith is so great. Then that is his victory. That's the reason why he has the victory is because he understands who God is. It's not because he's like, I'm totally strong enough to do this. I got this, you know. Um, he's He does trust in that he is equipped with what he needs, which is cool. Um, but really, he keeps saying that the problem is that these Philistines are defying the living God, and that's not going to stand, you know? Um, and uh, he says that, yeah, what's his super cool line here? Yeah, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. <laughs> so this is awesome. And that's the same thing we heard in what Hannah said, too. It's like those who oppose the Lord will be cut down. Um, and it's the um, so this kind of goes back. And I, um, you know, it's interesting, too, because so David cuts off Goliath's head here. So there's two passages that that makes me think of. One is Genesis 3. Um which the title of that is The Fall of Man. <laughs> um, and so this is uh, the Lord speaking to the serpent who has, been, who has allowed Satan to work through him. He says, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. This is really cool too, actually, because again, we see, so we see that God has a man, you know, and we also see that Satan has a man. Like, you don't see Satan, Satan is not... Um, you know, the, the obvious, like, red demon with the curly tail or whatever, like, and nobody would follow Satan if that's what Satan was. Um, Satan is, you know, um, like God, Satan is not visible. But like God, Satan works through people um, on earth. And there's basically, like we talked about in the last video, there's only two teams, you know, as much as we want there to be a neutral which we're like, obviously, I'm not going to serve Satan. What God says is, if you're not serving God, that is de facto, default, your master. And in the guise of sin, right? Which sin will send you to hell. So then you would be with Satan, which nobody wants to be with Satan. <laughs> you know, like, that's why Satan's not, like, out here, like, hey, anybody want to come on my team? Because there's very few people that would sign up for that. But... Um, Satan is, you know, he seduces. That's what he, that's how he wins people, is by appearing to be what he's not. Appearing to be strong when he's not, appearing to be able to satisfy your needs and desires when 
it's all emptiness in the same way that Paul talked about, you know, what benefit did you reap from these things that you're now ashamed of? There's never any payoff, you know, it never gets better, never gets good. You know, it's just like a momentary high, basically, with Satan. So anything in your life that makes you feel like that, that's not God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, Genesis 3, verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, who Satan is working through on earth, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And my Bible has a note with crush that it also can be translated strike. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. So David defeats Goliath with a stone to the head, uh, but he also cuts off his head. He strikes his head, right? And Satan strikes uh, David's heel, very much so. Um, I, your heel there is like, you know... Um, it's kind of like your Achilles heel or whatever, like your weak places. So uh, David does fall victim to temptation and to sin. Um, he becomes adulterous with Bathsheba, and then he kills her husband. So he becomes an adulterer and a murderer. Um, and But he's still God's man, um, and that's because he comes to God with his grief and realizes that his sin is against God um, because he's not being obedient to God's law and God's way. He's been seduced away from it, even though he wasn't conscious that it was happening at the time, that that's what it was. Um, so I feel like I'm rambling a bit here. Um, I had also wanted to take a look at um, the other scripture that I wanted to look at was Luke 4 to go with the Goliath and the Genesis scripture. So Luke 4, verse 1, <clears throat> this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, or this is right before Jesus begins his ministry. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him to up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Okay, so this is really interesting um, because this is Jesus being tempted, this is sort of, yeah, this is right before Jesus begins his ministry, uh, when he becomes um, not just Jesus that everyone's grown up around, but Jesus, the man of God. I mean, he's been God the whole time, but when he begins to profess. Um, so for 40 days, which is the same amount of time that Goliath came out against Israel, yelling, uh, yelling, you know, insults against them. For 40 days, Satan tempts Jesus in the desert by basically insulting his sense of self, right? So the whole nation of Israel is the chosen people. They all have been given the same designation that David has been given. They all should know enough to stand up for God, but they don't <laughs> because they're terrified of the appearance of things, right? They're like, ah, that looks like too much. That looks scary, you know? Um, so in this, in Luke 4, we see um, Satan just like with this full-out attack on Jesus's identity, where he's like, if you are the Son of God, if you are who you say you are, right? And what do we see? How does David win this battle in 1 Samuel 17? Because he knows that he comes in the name of the Lord. And that's the same way that Jesus stands up against Satan. He knows who he is, right? Um, so I have more to say about that. 
Um, and it's interesting, too, you should note here that um, Satan is coming against Jesus with Scripture. So it's important to, in the same way that we emphasized before, that um, that it's through that that um, the Lord spoke through his word. So you have to know the word. And you have to know the word, not just casually, not just a little bit of the word, but you have to know the word deeply in order to be able to defeat, because Satan knows the word, <laughs> right? So in order to be able to defeat what Satan is saying, which he's taking a few scriptures out of context to use them against Jesus, but Jesus uh, is the word, right? Um, so he knows, like, hey, no, that's... Psh, block, 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 you know, but if he didn't know, he might be fooled by Satan's cunning. So I'm gonna leave it on that note. And I'll be back with more. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.